um, uh, familiar names. It's been a, a while since we've had a chance to catch up. Uh, and it's a pity we're not here, uh, able to do this on campus just yet, but our, our aim is that we'll have um, a small guidance counselor event on campus before Christmas. So uh, we look forward to being in a position to um, send out invites for that. Uh, so um, today's agenda is, um, see if I now change my slides. Uh, our agenda today will kick off with uh, Professor Paul Doherty, who has joined us, Deputy President and Registrar here at NUI Galway for the formal uh, opening address. Uh, and Paul has uh, uh, kindly um, offered to stay on and take some Q&As um, um, upon completion of that. And Caroline Duggan will be assisting us in going through those. Any questions you might have? Um, we're then will be joined by Professor Rebecca Braun, the Dean of College of Arts, Social Sciences and Celtic Studies, for um, an update from the College of Arts um, and, and to give you a sense of uh, what's ahead in uh, the academic year ahead and even further than that. And then Natalie Walsh, Director of Entrepreneurial Development, uh, will join us to introduce you to the Designing Futures programme that will be very important for uh, future intakes at NUI Galway. And then finally, Eilish uh, Nilon Chief Events and Marketing Officer will give you a quick preview of the uh, virtual open day platform. Uh, as you know, open day is on, uh, taking place on Saturday, so we'll give you a little sneak peek of that uh, so you uh, can see what students can expect um, on Saturday. Uh, and then we'll wrap up promptly at 3.30 uh, and finish out then. So before we get, um, we invite uh, Paul uh, to um, speak to us, I just have a few quick updates that we often share this time of year, give you a quick sense of what's happening on campus and what's new for 2022. Uh, so first of all, we welcomed our intake 2021 last week with an online orientation. We had academic talks uh, and workshops, uh, and then 2,000 of those students actually joined us on campus over the weekend for uh, in-person orientation, uh, including talks and tours, uh, picking up goodie bags for the quad. We had wellness tents uh, and activities, drop-in clinics in some of the uh, colleges. Um, so really busy weekend on campus and you know, great to be able to welcome back those students. Uh, but also I suppose we have to start thinking about next year's uh, students and what's important for CAO 2022, we move on so quickly. Um, so just a few short updates from NUI Galway in terms of course offerings for 2022. Um, we don't have any new courses on offer for 2022, but we have a couple of new subjects and pathways to draw your attention to. Uh, and we have a chance to explore these better with you um, over the coming months and still be represented at the open day, but just to flag them to you nice and early in the year. Uh, in GY 101, we have two new subjects, uh, international development, which we expect is going to be very popular. Uh, employers and recruiters are telling us that they're going to, you know, this would be a very valuable subject to be graduating with. Um, and then again, the performance and screen studies, um, uh, drama and theater related subjects are always so popular. Um, and, and particularly with our you know, location in the west of Ireland, um, uh, we have some great strengths to offer in that subject. Um, so two new subjects in the joint honours that we think are going to be really popular. Uh, so I'm sure your students will be interested in those. And then secondly, in College of Science and Engineering, a new physics or uh, climate physics stream. So this is available in GY301 from 2022 as a subject, uh, physics and climate physics, and also available in GY320 uh, on the Bachelor of Science Physics degree um, as a climate physics um, uh, stream. So just to mention those changes to you, but we'll have a chance to uh, explore those in greater detail at open day. Um, I wanted to just give you a little sense of what we have coming up over the next few months. This is a great opportunity to share with you our plans. Our open day is taking place on Saturday, uh, and um, we will follow that open day with four information evenings in the autumn. Uh, these are CAO undergraduate information evenings, similar in style to what we did last year. So taking place from 11th of November to 2nd of December with a you know, real subject and injury industry focus uh, for each of those. Um, so we will be featuring graduates and students quite heavily in those events. So we would invite students to come to open day to explore options uh, and then come along to the information evening for an even greater field for the particular course they're interested in. Uh, we started welcoming back students for campus tours in the summertime uh, and uh, it was great to have that, um, uh, you know, having students back with us. Uh, they will recommence after open day. So from you know, early to mid-October, we'll be recommencing campus tours every Saturday, uh, but we will require booking for those. So any of your students interested in campus tour, they can start booking those in now, and we'll be running those every Saturday. We have good capacity on those, um, so uh, we can accommodate as many students as, as would like a campus tour. 
Um, the NUI Galway Prospectus uh, is, uh, is, has obviously been printed and they will be due in schools over the next 10 days. Delivery has just commenced. So just with the late publication of CAO uh, points, the, uh, the printing schedule is pushed out a little. So they're coming to you a little bit later than you'd normally have them, uh, but delivery plans are, are well underway now and will be with you shortly. Um, just to mention for College Awareness Week, you can expect a pack from NUI Galway. We have some really nice activity planned there, uh, you know, some new activity. You'll get a poster with a QR code and we are running um, short little snippet videos uh, introducing your students to college life throughout that week that can be joined live or can be watched back uh, once they're over. Uh, so you can expect that pack uh, in October coming your way. And then finally, to, just to mention that I guess the um, the guidance counselor newsletter, which we send out every month, will have all the updates for the, the month ahead. So to keep an eye out for that in your uh, inbox. Um, but open day is nearly upon us. It's on Saturday. The program of events is now available online. Uh, there are over 60 talks uh, taking place on Saturday and some really good talks on the main stage. So uh, please do promote that program of events to your students so they can start planning their day now and make the most of their time on Saturday. Um, activity running from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Uh, and we have a little competition to encourage students to register in advance. It really helps us if we have the registrations early. It helps us plan our activity and know where to put our, our time and energy into. So uh, for any student who registers before Thursday evening, they'll be uh, in with the draw to win uh, AirPods. So you might uh, give that a promotion with your students on our behalf. Um, so I'm going to hand over uh, now to Professor Bola uh, uh Deputy President and Registrar, uh, to formally open this seminar. Caroline Gronia and Ailish, the school liaison team, are here online and will be able to answer any small queries you might have. Pop them in the chat and we can get to those as we're going through the, the webinar. Uh, and also, if you have any questions uh, for any of our presenters, please do pop them into the chat. Uh, and Caroline will be our moderator and put those to our presenters at the end of their talks. Um, so thank you very much, and I'll um, hand over now uh, to Paul. Thank you. Many thanks for that, Sarah, and uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I'm not going to speak for very long. I think uh, we may have a more fruitful session through the Q&A, and I dare say that the deans will have more to say that would be of interest to you than I will. Um, first of all, can I welcome you on behalf of the university to this session, and, and thank you for taking the time to take part today. Uh, I think it's important for us that we maintain the links with the schools and, and uh, with guidance counsellors such as yourselves uh, in the hope, needless to say, uh, in our own self-interest that you will guide those, some of those students towards us. We think we've got a great offering here and uh, a great range of offerings and, and certainly uh, the more students we can get and, and, and the stronger students we can get in Galway, the better it is for all of us, not least the students themselves, but also I think for us as a university and, and for our reputation, and therefore ultimately for the, the, the value of the qualifications from this place. Um, I'll talk a little bit about COVID uh, because it really, no more than for yourselves, it's been a massive challenge for us over the past um, year and a half. And we've done our best to adapt. We've done our best to um, try and uh, make sure that the students get an education um, whether it's online, whether it's blended, some things have continued, such as labs over in the sciences, lab sessions, uh, even through COVID. Um, but it has been a challenge and people have put in, and I, I have to commend my colleagues, they've put in a massive amount of effort to try and make sure that we got the students through regardless and that we got the students in regardless. And for this coming year, our plans and our hopes are that we will be back to something more normal uh, it won't quite be full normality in the first semester. There'll still be a blended element because we can't, for example, pack the lecture theatres to full capacity. But we're expecting our students to be on campus. Uh, we're making provision for classes happening in person. Uh, the first years will be arriving in, uh, sorry, they arrived in yesterday. Um, and, uh, and, and they will certainly have a very different first year, even in the first semester, than last year's cohort, where the vast majority of stuff was online. Um, and we welcome that. I have to say, when I came in uh, to the office, and I've been back in the office since early August, but when I came in on the 6th of September... Just the enhanced student, teacher and learning. Sorry, uh, I missed that. Uh, so um, when I came in on the 6th of September and I saw students below in the quad queuing up for the aula, it was, it was just uh, fantastic. Um, 
uh, to see that. And, uh, and that's something that I think we all welcome. And my colleagues certainly have spoken of how pleased they are to be back seeing the students face to face. So we are making certain accommodations for students that are unable to return, but we are aiming for that significant return. We've put it into practice already with the first, with the second and, and third years, all years other than first years, and that's being put into practice this week for the first years. By the second semester, we hope to have aligned all of the different years and be finishing the academic year in the normal fashion. And if things go well with COVID, we'll even, I think, be back to more or less the uh, full campus experience in semester two, bearing in mind that a lot of the blended learning and the, the online materials that have been created out of necessity in COVID will be refined and will be enhanced and, and the experience post-COVID will be uh, different and, and arguably better than pre-COVID. The big challenge, I suppose, for all of us in, in, in the COVID thing has related to the rise in points in the Leaving Cert, the creation of extra places, how we cope with that, how we deal with that. And I know that that's particularly relevant to yourselves and the kind of advice that you're going to give um, and, and, are, and are already giving. So we have created additional places this year where we could. Sometimes we have simple constraints. Um, and, and, and some of you will undoubtedly have, have picked up on, on some of the things that I've written in the media and some of the things I've said on radio and so on. Um, that uh, in, for example, medical courses, there is a limit to the number of places that is conditioned, not simply by us not wanting to have more people in the classroom, but by the hospitals not having the, the space for internships and so on. Um, where we can create the extra places, we are creating them. Where we can't, uh, then, then unfortunately, the points have gone higher than we would like. There is a fundamental issue for me, and I've, I've been uh, vocal on this, around the comparability of the Leaving Cert across the years. And I think that the 2020 and 2021 have been given a bonus and given an advantage over previous years. And I've had a lot of correspondence from parents and, and from students who had pre-COVID Leaving Certs who are feeling that they have been disadvantaged and frankly I agree they have been disadvantaged and I've said at the government that they have been disadvantaged uh, but what's done is done those leave inserts are now there they're on the paper we as institutions have no legal basis to do anything other than take the points as they are but we are mindful that we've got to try and therefore accommodate as many students as we can within the constraints that we have within the resources that we have I'm mindful of and as you go into the students that are in, in sixth year now, uh, that they may be feeling demotivated by the prospect that there are lots of students sitting around with far higher points in 2020 and 2021, who may then put them at a significant disadvantage if it all goes back to normal in 2022. Uh, I've advocated very strongly that it should go back to the pre um, COVID distribution as soon as possible, and that we regard 2020 and 2021 as a blip year. That may well give some students a little bit of an advantage, although those who have deferred places um, will be deferring them on the basis of this year's points. Um, there's, I'm not sure what the statistics show in terms of how many students are really deferring um, relative to normal years. But I suspect that the vast majority of students who have got the points this year have been accommodated already, so that the cohort that will be sitting with a slight advantage will be relatively small. And I would really, really encourage all of you to, when you're talking to um, students, when you're talking to sixth years, that you really encourage them to pursue what it is they want to study, that, they, uh, that the points will get back to something more normal, hopefully. That very much depends on what the Leaving Cert does, because that's a symbiotic relationship. We can simply have to take whatever points come out from the Leaving Cert. But I would encourage you to encourage the sixth years not to be demotivated by the blip that has been there in the past couple of years, because the vast majority of those students have been able to get places. Many of those who have not been able to have been the students from previous years who are on the scale that I hope will pertain in the Leaving Cert next year. The only other point I'll, I'll make is this, and, it, and it's a personal one based on my own experience, and, and far be it for me to be um, uh, teaching uh, the proverbial granny to suck eggs and so on. But I do remember in school being someone who was good at uh, 
maths on the one hand and at languages on the other hand and being told and if any of you have been in careers were at careers events here a few years ago you may have heard me say this before so indulge the repetition please um and being told by careers advisors in school at the time that if i did maths i would get a job maths and computing if i did languages i'd be an unemployed school teacher and i followed that for a couple of years and ended up dropping out of college because i wasn't passionate enough about maths in fact, I was utterly bored with it by the time I got a couple of years into a degree. So the one thing I would say is, uh, and that has always been my firm view, I never became an unemployed school teacher, but I did go back and start studying German as a 21 year old, which I could have done when I was an 18 year old. And, and uh, if the careers advice had actually asked me, what am I passionate about rather than just what will I make money out of or what will get me a job? And, and I would always say to any youngster that ever asked me about what they should do, but the starting point is, what are you passionate about? Now, you've got to be good at it as well. Don't get me wrong. I'm passionate about hurling. I couldn't hurl to save my life. And if I'd ever decided I was going to make a career out of it, even if it had been a professional sport, uh, you can rest assured I would have been a failure. So yes, you've got to be good at it. But if you're passionate about it, you have a far greater chance of actually being successful in it for your life. So that's the one thing I would say, based on my own experiences, please, please, when you're advising those youngsters, do factor in what they're passionate about, not just what money they're going to make at the end of it. I think our youngsters have actually got greater ideals than just money anyway. So look, I'm going to stop there, colleagues, and I'm quite happy to take uh, any questions that you may have for me. And if I can't answer them, I hope that some of my colleagues will be able to help me out. Thanks, Paul. Um, if anyone has any questions that they'd like to put to Paul, if you want to use the raise your hand function or if you want to pop it into the chat, we can put it to Paul. I think you may have answered all their questions, Paul. I never knew my teachers to be shy. Are careers teachers all shy? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Guidance counselors, rather, to be precise. How do you wave a hand? Oh, thanks, Roshi. Yeah. <laughs> Um, hi, thanks for that. Um, and it felt very reassuring listening to that. But I had two leave and search classes today for careers. I'm in Balnasloe. I'm in an all boys school. And I told them I was attending this today and have they any feedback for um, the staff at NUIG. And they're, they're very demotivated. So, you know, to say to us as a profession to try and help our students stay motivated. It's quite difficult looking at NUIG and the points. So as you were chatting, I was doing an analysis there and I picked one course. I've picked commerce in NUIG versus business. In so back in 2018, commerce in NUIG was 420 points and UL business was 423. So somehow this year, in a year of inflated points, UL managed to keep their entry into business at 451, whereas the lowest entry into commerce is 476 in Galway, as high as 520. I think that's with French. And I'm excluding the global experience one. Yeah. So the students today, like in school, like they're fine students, but a real leaving cert. I'm looking at my cohort in front of me and I can see these are guys who would get 450 all day long. And I don't think they'll get the 500. So I'm going to tell them straight away, you need to look at business in UL. You need to look at business in TUD, in UCC, which is probably a bit high there, but the ITs. And I'm just a bit worried that NUIG is now becoming a little bit like Trinity and UCD. It's unattainable now for a lot of students. And I just wondered how was NUIG not able to protect those broad entry courses like business, their commerce program? Thanks for that, Roisin. Um, so I can't speak to the specifics of that course, but I can say something in general about that area. Um, and it is around the staff student ratios. So I do know that in commerce, we have very high staff student ratios. Uh, really at the level of that is way above even what you would have in secondary school. Um, and, and 
if we had taken the points down even further, frankly, the overall student experience would have suffered uh, very significantly because we simply would not be able to cope with those numbers. Bear in mind that a lot of what we were notified in terms of additional student numbers, we were notified at a couple of months notice and you do not get the requisite quality of lectures in place at two months notice. There's a whole process to be gone through and, and recruiting and advertising and so on. And again, this is something I've raised with government. Don't come and tell us in July that you want us to take an extra 4,000 students in the sector. Tell us the July before. And then we've got actually, a, 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 or, or at the very least January, you know, eight, nine months before, then we can advertise, we can get the best quality, we can put the people in place because you've said, we want you to take these numbers and here's the extra money to take them. But to simply pack them in and have uh, a staff student ratio that, that is one that uh, really is way over and above what it should be or could be is, is the kind of thing that, that we feel we would not be doing right by the students. Now, I'll, I'll just say that from 420 something to 470 something, is a long way off being the worst rise. And when you look at the extent to which the leaving cert results went up over the last lot of years, that probably to me looks as if it has, it is comparable to where it was pre 2020 in relative terms. And so I certainly wouldn't be encouraging students to, to not consider Galway. Um, we would be delighted to have the reputation of, C, of TCD in terms of excellence but we certainly are not striving for that kind of reputation in terms of elitism or anything like that, uh, because we are an institution very much in and of the West of Ireland and for the whole of Ireland. Uh, so I would encourage students to, to apply here regardless, um, bearing in mind that those points are inflated and we hope that that will be a temporary blip. Thanks, Paul. Thank, thank, you, thank you for that, Paul, as well. I just would be worried that even though it's not NUIG's intention to become elitist, if you if you use your careers portal, do a quick search on points, there's a nice tool there. You can put all the courses in NUIG in order of points. I mean, there must be a dozen courses in NUIG over 550 now between engineering, mm. biomedical science. And it's just, it looks elite now. So as a, where we're positioned in Banna Slow are two big, we're, feeder, we're a feeder school into UL and NUIG. That's the two universities and then a lesser extent Maynooth. It just looks now that students will see UL as the more attractive place to research because it's less stress. They're yeah. worried. They're worried about the leaving search. They're worried that will there, will there not be calculated grades. And as guidance counselors, we're trying to minimize stress. So you are, you're going to encourage them to look at the ITs and the other universities that have managed to kind of stay in what's attainable for most students, because they have been very inflated this year and it has just damaged all the points for most courses in colleges. Yeah, no, I, I hear the point, Roisin, I hope we don't go there. Uh, just bear in mind that actually across the country, we're no, by no means unique in that regard. Across the country, the number of courses that are now over 600 points or that are over five is exponentially greater in almost every institution than it was pre-COVID. I, I really do sincerely hope that that is a blip, a COVID blip. Thanks, Paul. Would anyone else have a question they'd like to put to Paul? I think he's answered the points question quite comprehensively, but there may be something else that somebody has that they'd like to ask. Um, Isha, I see your hand up. Isha Lane. Hi, Caroline, thank you. I'm sorry, I missed the first uh, 10 or 15 minutes because I couldn't find a link to this. Mm -hmm. So you may already have covered this, but um, I've just recently started working actually in the Kerry College of Further Education and oh. Training. Um, so um, I suppose I'm, I'm looking at this now in a new way for, as, as an FE specific guidance counselor. Um, as it happens that the campus I'm on, Denny Street, is where a lot of our nursing students and you know similar nursing, social studies, that sort of thing are based. And of course, the big question for them would be um, getting into the likes of nursing through the QQI route, because if they have a leaving search, they obviously didn't get in on the points or some may not have leaving certs or people may be from abroad or whatever. Um, I don't have the information to hand. I mean, 
I, I was recently looking over all of the colleges in Ireland and the number of places they have for QQI students on their nursing courses. And of course, they're dismally small. I mean, and, you know, compared to the number of people who are actually doing, say, QQI level five and nursing stuff, now, obviously, I know a lot of them are being realistic. Some of them are looking to the UK as well. They have to. But um, I still feel, and it wouldn't be just with nursing, but I suppose I'm, I'm coming. That's That's the current thing for me. I mean, what, why are there so few places on 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 the big, you know, courses like that that are that are reserved for QQI applicants? Given the fact that so many of them do not have any other option except to go down the QQI route. Anyone who can answer that, <laughs> I'd be grateful. Thank you. I'm afraid that is too specific for me, Ita. Uh, I don't know if anyone else can answer. Yeah, I mean, um, we do have, um, I think it might be two on general nursing and I think yeah. it's maybe two on mental health. And I don't know if there's any on midwifery, um, Isha. So I, I, it was only a conversation I had actually recently with another student in Loch Ray yesterday about the limited number of places. It does come slightly back to what Paul was saying about that to a large extent, we are um, limited by the HSC in terms of the number of students we can take on to the medical degrees, because obviously all of these students have to get placement and um, yes. it is something that we have raised with uh, Daniel Savory Daniel would be you know who in our in our university who we go to when we're talking to him about uh, QQI places and our courses so it's something that we are very much aware of uh, we're not unique in terms that there's small numbers of places dedicated oh, I know. something sure. we're looking at Isha we're definitely okay. looking at it we're very, definitely cognizant of it that there are particularly in nursing a lot of students who are not going to get the points that are and who would make fantastic nurses so it is mm -hmm. one of those areas that we are you know we are very cognizant of it, it is leave it with this is what i would say we are definitely okay. talking to daniel about it but well, that's good um, that's good to know that it's yeah that it's being, it, it, it is something we're aware of yeah and yeah. um, there is a fantastic guide that daniel and his team is working on at the moment and that will be available online i have myself and grony and ailish have it on all our slides this year we and on our prospectus this year we have included uh, the QQI places on all of the degree programs. So we're trying to make it much more visible as a route mm -hmm. for students to consider. And I think mm -hmm. putting it on the actual course pages for each of our degrees and our perspectives shows our commitment to this area going forward. Um, and we are, I, I was actually just on to Mount Talk today. I did a talk with Mount Talk and I spoke to okay, them about good. and mentioned your college, Isha. And encourage mm. them to as their plan as their extra plan their plan b to make sure they are looking at a uh, carry college so i'm doing that's a bit brilliant of for you <laughs> thanks, thanks Amelia, for that caroline thank you thank you thank you anybody else that has a question that they'd like to put to poll Carla, I'm conscious of uh, time Hi. here and um, other speakers lined up, so we can leave the invite out and actually you can take, if questions occur to our guests throughout the afternoon, please do pop them in the chat uh, and we'll feed back um, to Paul and the university management team, maybe any of these overarching areas of feedback that you feel it's important for us as universities to be aware of and to be thinking about as we plan uh, for the academic and uh, recruitment year ahead. Um, so I'll just say thank you very much um, to Paul for joining us. Uh, we greatly appreciate your time uh, and we'll feed back to you any further feedback that comes back later on this afternoon. Thanks for that, Sarah. I have to go and chair the Library Strategy Committee now. So good luck with the rest of your session this afternoon. Right. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we'll move on to our uh, second speaker. And I'm delighted to uh, invite Professor Rebecca Braun, uh, the Dean of the College of uh, Arts at NUI Galway to join us now Um, uh, just make sure she's online. Yep, I'm here. Oh, very good. Thank you, Rebecca. I'll hand over to you now. That's great. Thanks. Thanks a million, Sarah. And uh, yeah, good afternoon, everybody. I'm really, really pleased to take part in this event today. Um, it's it's the first uh, the first one of these for me. So you're my guinea pigs. Um, and I thought I might just start out by uh, just saying a little bit about myself because I joined uh, joined the College of Arts in January. Uh, and I've come over, uh, I've come from, from the, the UK higher education system, but um, right at the beginning, uh, I, I am I'm Irish and I did my, uh, I had my primary education in West Cork and uh, took my leaving cert uh, just outside of, of Limerick in County Tipperary. 
Um, and I thought I might just share a little bit of, of personal background because it, it sort of feeds into to, you know, the, the bigger picture of, of what arts wants to be and where it's going. And it maybe picks up um, coming at things that we've been talking about for just from a slightly different angle, but picking up on, on Paul's story as well about his own, his own way into his degree. Um, I was a I was a I was a good leaving certificate student and, and you know I I, I kind of got straight A's and I guess my 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 teachers knew I was on track for that, um, and I got the advice that probably many of you will be familiar with, which is that I should go and do medicine, um, or or, or veterinary science, but particularly I should go and do medicine, and I got quite frustrated um, because I kept being told I should do medicine. Um, and I liked I liked all my subjects. I did I did chemistry and biology and maths alongside French and German and Irish and English. Um, but I really, really liked French and German. So um, oddly enough, like Paul, who went on to do German, um, I too was a, a, a linguist. My passion was languages. Um, and I just felt kind of frustrated in, in the Irish context that it didn't seem to get the, the recognition that I thought it should have because I thought languages were fantastic and um, but yet people were constantly trying to talk me out of doing it so um, so I said okay I'll go away and I'll do it somewhere where it's difficult uh, and and I went to Oxford and, and did my degree there and um, one thing led to another and I ended up staying in the UK for my sins um, for the next 20 years or so um, and I'm sharing that because I suppose it does reflect a little bit on arts degrees and historically what people have thought um, an arts degree is for and who should take them and where they'll lead you. Um, and I'm really, really excited to, to be back in Ireland um, working in the context of arts degrees that look, I think, really different from, from when I was a student trying to, 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 um, to make my path and follow my interests. Uh, so, so coming to NUI Galway, um, you know, there's a, there's a, as obviously you're, you're well aware of, of the different, uh, the different pathways that we now have in the arts degree. Um, but, you know, so one of the big historic changes, I, I guess, over the last, I'm not quite sure of the time frame, but certainly 10 years or so, um, is the increase in what we now call our denominated programmes alongside uh, our, our standard entry GY 101 arts degree. Um, such that now it's around 50-50, that 50% that, uh, of our students are coming in with that, that, that general choice of, of seeing what they like from the arts programme, but then the other 50% um, are students who have maybe a clearer sense of what they want to study and they want to get on with that from the get-go and, and they value it because that's, that's something that's kind of settled in their minds already when they're at school. Um, so I think there's a really interesting mix now. If I were to critique the UK system, it's that it's sometimes too much the other way and students kind of get channeled into something that they think they're going to love, but then they don't and they kind of can't get out of it. And that's that's an experience at university, whether you're in the UK or Ireland, that the subjects that you study in university are quite different to how you study them in secondary school. And that's something that I should imagine as guidance counsellors, you're, um, you're trying to convey to students as well that, you know, maths, when you do it for the Leaving Cert, looks a bit different to when you then come do it at university level or indeed subjects that you can't do at leaving so you can't retake psychology for example um, when you're studying at a university it looks quite different to how people think it's going to look um, and the advantage of the of, of obviously the arts programs is that there, there is a lot of flexibility uh, in coming along and trying subjects and seeing what you think of them um, and then uh, once you've settled into being a university student uh, shifting the weight of your degree to one one set of subjects or, or another um so uh, so i love all of that i think that i think that's i had that existed in the in the form it does now when i was a, a 17 year old wondering what to do um, i think i might have thought again about about heading heading over over the pond um but where we are now as a college then is that we're um, we're thinking about our strengths we're thinking about the courses that we have that that, that work really well uh, we have done quite a lot of program innovation um over the last few years um, and we're just kind of taking stock and thinking about where we want to get to um, in, in five and 10 years time. Um, and very much driven by, by the belief in, in arts, by the belief in the subjects, the arts and the social sciences as to what they can do in the wider world and how we can communicate that out um, to, to prospective students, but uh, prospective employers and everybody else outside of the university who, who, who cares about you know, the different kinds of skills that a society holds, uh, holds within it. 
Uh, so we're really looking to, to find ways of, of, of expressing the great things that you can do with an arts degree and in particular the transformative potential of all of that learning and thinking uh, that goes on at university level when you take it out and you match it up uh, with the jobs that people need doing and the problems that people need solving. Uh, so that's a sort of a, uh, uh, I suppose it's a it's, it's an ethos, if you like, about what it means to study arts uh, and what it means to do research in the arts that we're, um, we're really coming together as a community to articulate more strongly. Uh, you saw at the beginning that we've got a number of uh, new uh, subjects coming on stream, international development and performance and screen studies, and they already uh, articulate that to a degree that international development is really thinking about, well, what are the critical skills that you need uh, if you want to go out and make a difference in the wider world? Um, and it includes um, uh, an element of, uh, you know, placement and that kind of practical linking up of uh, the learning that you might do in a traditional university environment, but with that kind of hands on approach of, of going out and, and doing stuff with with people well beyond the academic context as well. Similarly, performance and screen studies, I think, is a really exciting one because it's it's very much finger on the pulse about what people are interested in that the, the older fashioned term of that terminology would have been to study film studies. Um, or performing arts, but what we're seeing now, of course, is that whole media landscapes have changed and um, people want to have a sense of well, what about all of the social media and, uh, you know, the different, the different fo uh, forms that um, that media can take the gaming uh, industries, creative industries in the broader sense, and actually the huge potential that there is there when you think about that more applied understanding of performance. It's not just kind of high art and theatre, although it is also that, but it's then all these other ways in which society needs the kinds of skills uh, that you can that you can develop uh, in a really fun and, and appealing way on an arts degree. Um, so I don't kind of want to keep talking at you forever. So I think I'll, I'll, I'll stop there and just, just see what kinds of questions you might have or things you might like me to say a little bit more about. Any questions for Rebecca? Um, yeah, sorry, just hi, Karen. Thanks, Hannah. Thank you. Um, it's really just, I suppose, I don't know if other people find this, but I find it sometimes confusing to figure out how many subjects can be studied along with, say, the denominated programs. Um, you know, I always feel like you're kind of searching a bit for it, even if that could be a little bit clearer, maybe that, okay, if it is, for example, the form, performance and screen, is it one more? Is it a double major? Is it... Um, along with, I know as you look into it in detail, you'll see what groups it's with, but I don't know, I do, I find that a little bit hard to navigate, so I'm not sure. Mm, is, is that a point of feedback or, or are you asking a specific question about, do you want to, an answer to a specific question there? Um, I suppose, what is the best way to access that? Is it through, say, I know in Careers Portal, it's definitely not the clearest way it's outlined. Is it maybe just through the prospectus? Is that where it's outlined best, would you feel, or...? So I'm going to defer that one to uh, to Elaine, who's who's got the knowledge on the detail here. No problem. Hi, Hannah. Thank you for that. And I, you know, I I completely appreciate that because with all these new programs, they do have slightly. Some of them do have slightly different structures. So yes, you with some denominated programs, you can take um, one or two subjects alongside in first year, and then some others have more of a minor uh, major structure. So um, I appreciate you know that messaging. Um, with so many programs, can be a little confusing. But yes. In the prospectus, it will outline very clearly the structures of um, all of the individual programmes. Um, and then equally, on any of the course pages in the course outline tab um, on our website, it will also outline the structures. If there is another portal or other places where you look for information that you think it would be helpful um, to have uh, you know, those clear outlines of the structures, um, I'd very much take that um, on board and we can supply you with um, those uh, structures more clearly, clearly laid out for, for those portals. So maybe um, Caroline and Sarah and the team could advise me um, and maybe others in the colleges if there are other uh, portals whereby, you know, it would help be helpful to have these structures. But in the first instance, the prospectus will have them and uh, the course pages on the Anyway Galway website. Okay, thank you. No problem. Could I interrupt there? Sorry, I forgot to take my hand down the last time, but I needed That's to put okay, it in just now. Sorry, back to QQI again. Um, 
just as you're talking about arts there, I've discovered now, I only started here a few weeks ago, but we've a lot of social studies groups here, both level six and level five. Psychology seems to be the way they, a lot of them are, are looking to go at the minute. But a, a big thing for a lot of them now is maths. Um, for those who don't have a leaving cert or don't have leaving cert maths, um, I was just, sorry, I was just interrupted there by the, the maths teacher who's, um, th some of them are wondering, do they need to do maths if they're applying as a QQI uh, candidate? Um, I'm finding it hard to get clear answers, but I, I know that, um, sorry, it's, it's just a question in terms of maths. And they keep saying, why do we need maths if, we, if we're going to be studying psychology? And I've been trying to explain it's a general matriculation requirement and all this. But just if somebody is coming in QQI route specifically to psychology, would you know, would they still be required to have leaving cert maths or could they do a QQI level five maths or would you happen to happen to, happen to have that information? Yeah, I can I can answer that um, Lisa, as well. Maths isn't actually a requirement for the arts courses at NUI Galway. Um, okay. Our okay. requirements are uh, English, Irish and a, a third language and the other matriculation um, oh, wow. grades that but are is, required. But that's not a general matriculation requirement though, normally? Sorry, yes, it is, but it's not a, um, we don't have a specific requirement in maths for our subjects, unlike having to have, you know, a third language. Right, but if somebody, but what I mean is, do they not have to have some maths grade as a general matriculation requirement? That's what I'm asking. No, no, they don't. No, we don't have maths as a requirement. Okay, so, yeah. okay, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. sent them not, actually go not, at, not for arts at NUI Galway, but you, every college has slightly different requirements. Sure, yeah, so, yeah. Um, science will have different, business will have different. Oh, I understand that. Now, no, it's just they were all asking me about the maths, and uh, I was just trying to look it up myself. And when I no. went in and out of a few of them, seemed to have maths, but particularly if they're coming in using a QQI level five or a QQI level six award, which wouldn't have maths in it. You know? Correct. Yeah. So um, again, I, I would have to refer back to the QQI guides specifically, but as a general requirement, it's not a it's not required. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you very much. Uh, can I ask a question, please? Absolutely, go ahead. Um, uh, I'm just inquiring again about psychology because I'd have a number of fellows who'd be interested in psychology and uh, in UCC, you used to be able to do psychology through arts, um, but no longer the case. So now they're looking at Galway, but is, can you just tell me about the progression route on to um, from art psychology into the profession to become a psychologist? Yeah, I can. Absolutely. So um, I guess just coming back and, and talking about because I know psychology is such a, a popular subject um, and indeed it is extremely popular in any way go as well. So firstly, I guess there are two routes for students studying psychology on the denominated BSc psychology um, and then studying psychology through the joint honours or uh, alongside another uh, denominated course as well. Um, so if a student is studying psychology through arts, um, they will usually do their three or four years, depending on their subjects, and then go on to do a conversion diploma. So we offer a conversion diploma for those students who have studied psychology as a subject, and then also for stu students coming from different disciplines as well. And then they will need to go on then to do further study. So the conversion diploma, in, in essence, gives them the same qualification as if they had done the full BSc psychology uh, denominated degree. Um, and then they will go on to do a uh, master's in particular areas or else their, their clinical doctorate of psychology. So depending on what their uh, career ambitions are within within psychology but I guess the, the key thing to say is that to be able to be recognized by the PSI which is the Psy Psychological Society of Ireland in order to go on to do further training and um, after studying at undergraduate level they'll go on to do the the conversion course then. What's the entry requirements for that conversion course in the and um, the undergraduate? Undergraduate so it would it, depending on whether they have done psychology or whether they haven't done psychology um, it would be a an upper or second class honours uh, in psychology as a, as a minimum and um, it is it is a very competitive course and it's a very popular course but um, that would be the requirement. And is that is that okay to have done that as the the joint honours or would it want to be a major? 
Well, the joint honours is a double major, so it's fine to have done that as the joint honours, yeah. It doesn't have to be a, a major minor structure. The, the majority of people will have been done psychology through the joint honours. Thanks, Elaine. Um, I have one question for you from uh, Rose uh, Quinn in um, Mount Bellew. Rose just wants to ask, do we envisage keeping the third language requirement for all our arts degree pro programmes? Um, so my understanding is this is part of a, a requirement as part of the NUI structure. Um, so I I can't really definitively say that. Um, it would probably be governance guidelines that would be coming from the NUI structure. Um, I haven't heard anything to the contrary um, personally, so it would be remiss of me to kind of say anything otherwise. Um, as far as I know, that is uh, that will continue to be a requirement. But you know, if there is anything else, um, we'll absolutely um, we'll absolutely communicate that. Thanks, Celine. Thank no you. Problem. Might just be worth um, adding in on that, although it's it's coming at that question from a, from a different angle. That um, internationalisation is hugely important on, on the university agenda and certainly for the college. So I think a general um, commitment to be to having a lot, you know, the, the chance for student mobility and staff mobility is uh, absolutely going to you know, it's going to be felt, it's going to be a felt thing on the campus. So um, it doesn't matter, you don't have to be brilliant at languages, but we certainly would imagine that any student who comes here will have that opportunity um, to, to go out into the wider world and use the language skills they have. So it's something that's, that is important to us. Thanks, Rebecca. Okay, so I'm conscious of time. Um, so uh, thanks, Rebecca. Thanks, Elaine. And again, as Sarah said, if there are any further questions, you know, uh, please email us and we can follow them up with Rebecca and Elaine. Um, but I'm going to uh, call on Natalie Walsh now uh, to give us her presentation. Natalie is Director of Entrepreneurship at NUI Galway. Thanks, Natalie. Thanks, Caroline. Could I just share my screen if that would be okay? I think you might be able to there, Natalie, now. Yeah, is that showing okay for you all? Yes, we can see it, Natalie. Thank you. Okay, I'll go back to the start. So firstly, uh, thank you so much for the, the kind invitation today. It's similar to Rebecca. It's my first outing in this forum, um, but I'm delighted to be with you uh, to share a new initiative in NUI Galway called Designing Futures. So uh, to preface this, you will not see Designing Futures as a course on the CAO, it's now forming part of the, the student experience. So any student coming to NUI Galway will have the opportunity to engage with the Designing Futures Initiative. So a little bit of the, the kind of background to why Designing Futures. Um, so the, the Higher Education Authority in Ireland recognise that the world is changing, not just the world of work, but in general and that we need to reevaluate how we are working with our students and increase provision in area of skills deli delivery. So Designing Futures is responding to all of these changes to enhance the student experience. So it's based Natalie, on- Natalie, just to interrupt you for, for a moment. Uh, you might go to slide view, if you want to slide show and start. Um, the, the slides are just not appearing in your order, I think. Oh, moment. sorry, no. There we go. How is that, okay? And there we go. Perfect. Thank you. So um, designing future. So it's future focused, as I've said, we are really focused on shaping a new way to educate and learn. Um, creativity is at the heart of designing futures and we want to introduce creativity across our campus. Um, creativity as a mindset and innovation as a mindset is something that we're keen to instill uh, in as many of our students as we possibly can. And we really are working in a partnership model. So not just beyond campus, but across our campus to introduce students to as many experiences and opportunities as we can. So as why designing futures? Um, so we've, we've created designing futures to support students to design their own education, to create a supported skills development pathway where they can develop practical skills that will be acknowledged alongside their degree. So um, on completing Designing Futures, they, they will get um, a Dean of Students Award, which I'll speak to a little bit later on. That includes both the skills learned within the curriculum, 
but also the co and extracurriculum activities that they take place that they take part in. It has been created to enable students to succeed in their future world of work. And we've achieved that through working with a number of industry partners to ensure that the graduates who are going out and seeking work across different industries are prepared, that they have more than the subject matter expertise that they will develop through their degree, that they have the skills and human skills necessary to, to, to thrive and succeed in whatever their future paths will be. We've designed it to obviously support and enhance NUI's Galway's position as an innovative student-centered institution. And we're also leveraging international and local partnerships, including working with Stanford and Georgia Institute of Technology to bring some really interesting and innovative modules and content to our students in NUI Galway. So in terms of if I was a student, what would the benefits be to me? Because of the personalization, we are opening up both the understanding and accessibility of opportunities to students. We know that coming to university is, um, can be very overwhelming. So what we're trying to do is wayfind and support the student experience to increase their sense of belonging and to identify opportunities where maybe they're interested in learning something new, trying something different out, or building on a skill that they've worked on through their second level experiences with you all. Again, it's an, a tailored experience and it's about building relationships both across peer-to-peer -peer groups, but also across campus in terms of working with different staff, um, different student groups, and different members of our broader community. So as I said earlier, there is an academic, a professional, and a personal skills development remit with the project. So it really is supporting students to be global citizens uh, and to, to really design their way forward. And as, as I said earlier, it is recognition of the entire university experience. This side is a little bit busy, but this is a busy project. So I'll try to pick it as best I can. Um, within the Designing Your Life pillar, this is open to undergraduate undenominated arts and science students initially. So we're piloting with that group um, at the moment. And what it encompasses is, again, that personalized experience where you're supported by student success coaches. So we've just recruited three coaches who will work across the colleges to meet with students and to introduce the many opportunities that are available across campus to them um, to help them wayfind and select opportunities that they'd like to engage in. We are also at the delivery stage of three new modules within the curriculum and that will grow to 16 new modules over the lifetime of the project. And they are focused really on the kind of skills pathway and working with students um, to develop their professional self, but also their personal self. The designing with others pillar, and this is where I sit um, in terms of my role within the entrepreneurial development uh, unit, is really around innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, it is around working with enterprise partners to, to solve problems that they've identified within their companies. It is around developing internship and ambassador programs, which are paid. Um, so students can come and work with us during a semester. We normally bring them in for 10 weeks and they get to experience working in an innovation and entrepreneurship hub and they get to grow their skills and development in that space. We also have things like the Empathy Lab and the Innovation Sandbox, which are there to drive curiosity, imagination and creativity and support the student experience uh, further. So then in terms of who, who works with us from our enterprise partners, we've got nine enterprise partners who work with us at the moment. And their role is really to help us to de develop this transversal skills um, programs that we offer um, to give us challenges that students can work on um, and then go out into industry and maybe visit sites and get a sense of what working in these organizations may look like how they work, the, the types of people who work there, uh, and also the, the types of roles that are available um, as the, the working world evolves and changes. So this is our, our starting nine partners. Um, we would love to increase it and see an Irish speaking partner, to see a social enterprise. So that's something that we will work on during the lifetime of the project to, to kind of increase the opportunities for students um, and also open up the, the region and the, the strengths of the region to as many of our students as we can. 
so I'll close on this slide and um, we're so new we don't have a website and <laughs> so please forgive me for that but uh, we will next month but if there are any questions on the project um, designing features at NUI Go it will, will get the team and my own email address is natalie.walsh at nuigoway.ie and I'm happy to, to field any questions you have today or even on reflection if there's anything you'd like to, to revisit. So thank you so much. Thanks, Natalie. Um, I have a question actually from Isha. Um, she said the um, uh, Empathy Lab sounds intriguing. So could you tell us a little bit more about the Empathy Lab? Yes, yes, happy to. So um, we use design thinking as a methodology um, for innovation and entrepreneurship. And what we found over the last couple of years doing uh, working with students is that there was this real interest in the lived experience and actually taking part in something that maybe they wouldn't get to experience. And obviously, we cannot expose students to, to certain experiences. Um, so it's how can we replicate and how can we let them walk in the shoes of others? So one of the pieces of equipment that we're just about to purchase is for an aging society. We know we're living older. Um, we know we're living longer. Um, so we have what we call a geriatric suit. So when you put the suit on, you get to experience what life is like as a seven year old person. Um, and the suit can be adapted in terms of eyesight, in terms of hearing capacity, in terms of mobility. And when we are designing with an age society, what we want to do is to create solutions that are relevant for them and that, that will improve their lives. So what we want to do is create as many environments and opportunities that we can for students to actually experience what their user um, is experiencing so that they can create something that will, has use um, in society. We're using virtual reality as well. I'm not an expert in the field of virtual reality, but again, it's to kind of replicate certain environments, one of which would be an operating theatre. So if you're going in to operate and maybe Boston Scientific have given us a challenge where they want to improve um, the process for a nurse who is preparing for a stent operation so that we can actually get the students to, through VR, walk through the experience of being that nurse, what she sees, what she hears, and what goes on around her within the operating theatre. So they're the type of experiences that we're hoping to bring to the lab um, and we'll have that operational in the next, co next couple of months. So it's, it's a very exciting time for us in terms of upskilling, but also in terms of the opportunities of students to, to engage in these types of technology um, and to hopefully come up with some solutions for society and some of the challenges that we're facing. Thanks, Natalie. Um, Michelle, all the way from Dingle. Hi, Michelle, how are you doing? Um, I wanted to just ask you this, Natalie. Uh, do students apply for the pilot programme? How are they selected? So they, if they are in um, the arts and science undenominated, um, their coaches will reach out to them and they will start that engagement with them. If it is the entrepreneurship and innovation uh, pillar, what they will do is we will open calls for programmes and they apply to that. Um, if they're an NUI Galway student, we will find a programme for them. Um, we expected last semester, which, you know, it's an unusual one because we had COVID and we were working remotely. Um, we didn't think we'd have huge uptake in the programmes, but we had over 600 digital badges awarded to students during the semester. And we managed to find homes for every student who was interested in innovation and entrepreneurship. And I think the beauty of what we're doing is we are growing a team, number one, so we have capacity to train and to work with smaller groups. And number two, we now have nine fantastic enterprise partners who are willing to mentor, come in and meet students. So we have a lot more capacity to support students um, through the programmes. And we run about six day programmes a semester as well. So there's something there from one to two days right up to eight weeks. Um, all incentivized, so prize funds for, for most of the programs in terms of developing ideas, internships and opportunities. One of the student teams have the opportunity to go out to Boston Scientific and to present their idea to the, the Boston Scientific production team, which in itself was huge for the students because the one uh, or two of them on the course didn't have a work placement piece. So it gave them a really strong company experience that they could then bring into an interview um, and it really set them apart in terms of building out their portfolio. 
Thanks, Natalie. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for taking the time to join us, Natalie. I really no appreciate problem. it. Um, Ailish, if you're there, I might ask you maybe to just give an introduction to the Open Day platform for um, our listeners and viewers. Thanks, Ailish. Thanks, Caroline. Thanks, Caroline. And welcome, everybody. So I am delighted to give you a preview of the NUI Galway Undergraduate Virtual Open Day uh, platform. And just keep in mind, everybody, that we're still building the platform at this stage. So I might ask Sarah or Caroline to let me know if you can view this. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So the platform is very easy to navigate. And most importantly, it's easy for the students and yourselves, parents and guardians to log into the platform. I know this was a worry uh, when we ran our open day on our last virtual platform. So it's very, very simple, I can reassure you. So logging into the platform to create an account and log into the NUI GOI virtual open day, you simply add your email address, as you can see here, click confirm, okay? And this will bring up another little window where you can click on reset password, okay? A link then will be sent to your account and that will contain instructions on changing your password. And then you log into the portal with an email address and the newly created password. So it's very, very simple. So I'm going to log in here. Bear with me one second. Okay, so this is our virtual platform for Saturday for Open Day. So as you can see, we've got four main focuses on the day. We have the schedule, the exhibition, the live stream, and the help desk. So our schedule will be linked to our program of events. Uh, it's an essential guide for all of your students. Uh, all of our talks are listed and all of our 91 boots are listed on the schedule. So it's an important factor. And just to mention as well, it is available on our NUI Galway Open Days website at the moment for your students to download and plan their day. Then we have our exhibition space, which is the most important space, I think, on the day. And I'm just going to use the sidebar at the moment um, to click into our exhibition hall. As I said, the site is still being built. We've broken down the exhibition hall into six different areas. So we have the support services for everyone inside the support services. You can see where our admissions and scholarships booth will be. Adult Learning are joining us, the international office. Fees are joining us on the day. Susie are going to be joining us. We have the sports stand, the access center, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just going to go back here. So we have the art section, the business section, the law section, science and engineering, and then you can click into view the medicine, nursing and health sciences boots. So I'm just going to click into arts today just to show you a boot ahead of Saturday's event. So I'm going to click into the general arts boot. So this is the arts joint honors boot for Saturday. Okay, so this is what a boot will look like. Very, very simple to navigate as far as here, I hope. So within the boot, we will have all links for you to click and join our talks. So as we mentioned, we've over 60 talks taking place on Saturday within our, within our boots. You click on the graphic at the top of each of the boots to join your talks, okay? Here you'll see some text being entered by each of the course directors. On the right-hand side, you can see there's documentation attached to some of the boots that you can download, some social media channels that are linked to NUI Galway. And most importantly for your students on the day is to speak to one of our staff members, okay? So all of our staff members will be listed here on the right-hand side. Now, as you can see, I am currently online. Now, as I did mention, the site is still being built. There will be a notification on the top of all of our booths just to let your students know that green means active. So you can actually, you can relay this back to your students that once they see a staff member is online, it will have a green button here, or we are going to ask our staff members when they are finished on the platform to state offline here. Okay, but look at that, it's very, very simple to follow. For your students to ask a question, they literally double click on the academic's name. And then at the time, I'm sorry, one second now. At the bottom here, once the day is active, it'll ask you to ask a question. Okay, it'll ask the student to ask a question here. And that's all that, that's all there is to it. And again, just to mention that the questions on the day will be one to one. So the questions will be, it's not one to many. So the academic, it's all a private conversation. And just to make sure that you relate to your students that no, no question is silly and not to be afraid to ask the questions on the day. That's what their academics and all the staff are there for is to ask, answer any questions or any worries or concerns the students may have. So there are exhibition booths and we've 91 exhibition booths. So I, again, I'll relate to the program um, and ask your students to plan their day maybe beforehand and to know where they're going. Okay, so we'll just go back to the main platform for a second. 
the live stream on the day. So as well as running over 70 um, talks that can be accessed through the booths, we're also running five main talks on Saturday and they will run through the live stream here. So the focus on those will be, uh, where will an NUI Galway uh, take you? It's a panel discussion taking place. We have another main stage talk, which will be student life at NUI Galway. The third uh, main stage talk will be cultivating an Olympic mindset. We're delighted that the um, Irish rowing team uh, manager Fergal O'Callaghan, who visited there, who 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 had the um, who had the um, who was delighted that he could attend. Sorry, the Olympics, the the Olympics this year. So he will be presenting as well. And we also have preparing for college for 2022. So this is also going to be a panel discussion. So just to make sure that, that your students tune into the live stream on the day. And they can also, they also have the opportunity to ask questions here on the day as well. And then finally, we have our help desk. So again, if your students are, you know, if they haven't had a chance to look at the schedule or if they're concerned on where they need to go in relation to joining a talk or asking a question, our team will be on hand to ask those questions. And just to finally mention, on the right hand side, there will also be this um, a sidebar and the agenda here. I find this is and again, the site is still being built. All of our talks will be listed here in the agenda. OK, and for your students to plan their day, they can click on this little star here that will actually go into their own schedule. And once they've once they've planned their day, what they can do is their schedule will give them an alert or it will prompt them to let them know that the actual talks are taking place on the day. So it's a really nice feature. So we're really happy with that. And just to say as well, you can order a prospectus from the platform. So the students, if they'd like to order a prospectus, and I know Caroline had mentioned in the chat that the prospectuses should be in schools, which I think on the 8th of October is what you said, Caroline. And then a fun factor for the day, which I think we all need at this stage, is we're running another competition online on the day for the students. And now the competition itself, it'll be like, um, I'll keep it a secret, I suppose, at this stage, but we're running a fun little competition for the students. And again, there will be another lovely prize to win on the day. And we'll announce all this on the platform. But basically, the students themselves can monitor who's at the top of the leaderboard. So there's no way in getting away of, you know, who's won this fantastic prize on the day. So again, just to mention to your students that there will be another opportunity to win a prize on the day. So we would appreciate if everybody registered before the uh, before 11 p.m. on Thursday, because we are um, one lucky winner is going to win a pair of AirPods. Any one lucky winner that registers is going to win a pair of AirPods um, if they register before 11 p.m. this Thursday. So that is our platform. We find that again, it's very very intuitive. It's very very simple, and and I don't know if anybody has any questions. So thank you, Caroline. Thanks, Ailish. If anyone has any questions about the platform, Ailish is our expert, our technological expert on open day platforms at this stage. Um, Eilish, maybe if you had a moment, just because we have a couple of minutes, you might share the programme and just talk through the programme of activity uh, and the talks, the range of talks that are available, because that has just been finalised and published um, this morning. So it might be useful for you to give us a quick look at that if that's not putting you on the spot too much. Not at all. Just bear with me and I'll just share my screen again. Just one second. OK, so can you all see this, Sarah? Yeah, we can see it. Thank you. It's quite yeah. large. So yeah, um, just bear with me. Yeah, I might just go through it a little bit, uh, a little bit slowly. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. All this. OK, so again, yes, our, our virtual open day program was just um, available since last night. So we're delighted. So you can see here. It's very, very simple to follow. This is the exhibition hall listing. So we have 91 booths on the day and they're all clearly listed here. OK, so we've got everything from all the subjects that are available through GY 101, all of the denominated degrees. We went to some of the professional services that were available on the day. We are delighted that Susie are joining us. And again, all of these staff will be available to answer questions within the stalls. Uh, business have their own general questions uh, or stall and um, they also have denominated uh, boots so for the BCom, BCom Global, BCom Languages, BCom Accounting etc. Shannon College we're delighted will be joining us on the day also. Uh, Law at NUI Galway have their own boots and they're all colour co uh, coordinated so it's very very simple to, to navigate through the programme and to find it on the platform. And then we have all of the science engineering boots here. So you have a welcome to science in your Galway booth, and we also have a welcome to engineering booth, just in case that you're unsure of where to ask your questions on the day. So here are your engineering booths. Underneath this, we have a medicine booth, we have a nursing and midwifery booths, 
uh, all of our health sciences, so the podiatric medicine, speech and language, occupational therapy, and also St. Angela's will be joining us on the day. Their booth actually will be available within the medicine um, section on the exhibition hall, as well as the art section on the exhibition hall, and their booth's 91. So as I mentioned earlier, we've got our main stage talks on the day. These will be available through the live stream and they're starting from 12 p.m. So we have, as I mentioned, where will an NUI Galway degree take you? From 12.45, we have joining NUI Galway as an international student. Uh, 1.30, we'll have a panel discussion with student life at NUI Galway. 2.15, um, cultivating an Olympic mindset, as I mentioned. Uh, we are delighted that uh, Fergus, Fergal O'Callaghan, the Irish um, rowing team manager, is going to join us and give his experience about the Tokyo o Olympics. And then at three o'clock, just to finish, and I think it's very important for your students um, to join, we'll be preparing for college 2022. And this is where the admissions officer will be joining the accommodation services fees. So if your students have any concerns and they'd like to ask some questions, um, they should tune into that live session. And then this we've listed in all of our talks and we've made it that slightly bit easier this year where all of our talks, we've given you the booth number that you need to attend to join that talk. So if you're interested in social sciences, you know that you're going to booth 47. And if you're interested in journalism, you know you're going to booth 38 at two o'clock. Okay, so here are all of your art subject talks as well. We've got everything I think covered for this virtual open day to move down. The College of Science and Engineering are putting on a full suite of talks that cover all denominated degrees within the science and engineering section. The computer science are running a talk as well at between two and 2.45. We'll move down, we've got the College of Business, Public Policy and Law. So business are actually repeating their talk. So they're running a talk at 12.30 p.m. And if your students aren't on the platform at that stage, they can also rejoin again at 2.30 p.m. And Shannon College of Hotel Management, Booth 55 will be giving a presentation at 1.30 p.m. And then our College of Nursing and Midwifery. Uh, medicine again will also be repeating their talk. So your students can join the panel or the platform at 12.30 p.m. But if they're not in time, they can also re re they can join the repeat session that is taking place at 3 p.m. And this is at booth 86. So St. Angela's College Sligo will also be giving a presentation at 1.30. And we're delighted to say again that the Access Centre, the Disability Support Services, FETAC and Mature Students Information, they're running two sessions on Saturday. So at 1 p.m. it's the opportunities for further education students. And this is at Booth 7. And then we've got the Access Programme for School Leavers, and this will be taking place at Booth 7. So it's a full packed schedule. So we would really advise that you um, share or ask your students to log on to the nuigalway.ie open day website and that they download a copy and that they plan their day in advance just to make sure that they don't miss anything. So I hope that's okay, Sarah. Yeah. Thank Perfect, you. Irish, thank you. Uh, it's exhausting just reading about it, let alone actually uh, delivering it on Saturday. Um, so thanks for talking us through it. No problem. A couple of questions there, uh, and you just asked about, is it possible to share this in your classes? Uh, and I guess what we're suggesting is to share the programme widely, because this is all the timings, the booth numbers, uh, and is what students need, I guess, right now to plan their day on Saturday. And then we're aiming to have the platform uh, open and available from Thursday evening. We'll have set up complete by then, and then students will be able to go in and browse and find their stall, find the main stage, etc. But probably what they need right now is the program uh, uh, to plan what talks they want to do. So uh, we're very grateful for your help in, um, in sharing that program. I've pasted the link below uh, and I just sent it in today's email that uh, you got this morning uh, about this event. Um, she has the link in there also. Um, so happy to take any questions on open day. And as this was the final piece in our agenda, um, happy to take any questions broadly about uh, anything anyway, all we related. Um, and I see Bernie, you're just asking, will uh, talks be recorded and available after Saturday? Um, the majority of talks will be available. Um, uh, some of our arts talks will not. Um, the platform has different functionalities. Some of them is possible to record and some of them um, it is not possible to record. But I would say probably about 70% will be recorded. But for the arts talks, if a student is really interested, particularly in a subject or a denominated area, they should really try to get it on Saturday and be there on Saturday because they won't be recorded. Uh, but I understand the science and engineering, uh, medicine, 
obviously health sciences, business and law, a lot of those will be. Uh, but it is nice to be there um, kind of on the day, uh, you know, and see students uh, hopefully asking questions and engaging. Um, and each I see you didn't get that email, so uh, we'll send it on again, uh, the programme separately. Uh, we want to send it on as a reminder to everybody on this call. So happy to open up, I guess, to any final questions. Um, you know, feel free to raise your hand or just jump in uh, if there's anything else we can assist with. We're joined here also by, I see um, Adrian from uh, School of Business and Sarah from Shannon College uh, and Elaine from College of Arts. So, you know, if there's any, um, any questions you have been uh, waiting to ask us, this is a good opportunity. And I might just finish up on one final point uh, and, and to let you know what our plans are for next semester. So we're really hoping to see uh, a return to um, having students um, and yourselves on campus next semester. So we're in the early stages of planning for a spring open day, which will have some on campus activity uh, and also the early stages of planning for taster days. Uh, and, um, you know, so we're really looking forward to having you back in spring. It's a little bit early to announce those yet, but for um, autumn, the information evenings uh, will be virtual, but we will be bringing back the campus tours from uh, mid-October. So for any of your students who are dying to get a look around campus from October onwards, we will be, um, we'll be rolling those out and then much fuller return to campus for activity in the springtime. And that's our plans to date. So my team and I will stay on the line and for anybody who wants to hang back and ask some questions, please do. We'll be here for another few minutes. And for anybody who needs to head away, um, just to thank you very much for joining us and for your time. And also to thank our uh, speakers and contributors um, uh, for bringing us up to date um, on developments in their areas. It's uh, been really worthwhile. So if you're still with us, thank you. Um, I think I see Ethan's hand might be up. I'm not sure if that's from earlier, but yes. feel free to no, jump in. Yes, sorry. I'm oh, no, sorry, no, no I, know I, I seem to be, I 